Hey guys, welcome back to The Blade Shop. Thanks for being here. As always, I appreciate the support. Today we're gonna to talk about something that I think is maybe one of the more overlooked, maybe that's not the right term, maybe one of the more misunderstood aspects of knife making or knives perhaps in general, and that is design. And so today we're gonna to talk about how, design, how to design a good knife, and I'll show you a little bit of how I like to go about doing that. I've got my little sidekick. Say hi. Say hi. <gasps> Good job. All right, let's get into it. While it might seem obvious to most people, the number one thing that you need to remember when it comes to designing a good knife is what is it for? What is it gonna be used for? What is the intended purpose or function of that tool? And that's going to inform and direct your design process. At least that's how I like to do it. The reason, as you may know, that I got into knife making years ago was because I enjoyed using knives in the outdoors, in the wilderness, doing different things like bushcraft, survival skills, all of that kind of thing. And so the underlying basis for me was to build a, a useful, beautiful, dependable tool that I could take out into the woods or anybody else could take out into the woods. And, and use and enjoy. And so that is the underlying foundation for my personal knife making journey. And there are other genres in which you must know what is the knife for, such as a kitchen knife, a chef's knife, or even a fighting knife, things like that. So the purpose and the function absolutely must be taken into consideration so that you can fulfill uh, the intended purpose and function with the uh, design that follows. Now one of the reasons I'm doing this video is to provide information not just for people who are interested in making knives but also for people who are or have been uh, customers of mine or, or who will be um, and people who are interested in in just knives in general because from time to time I'll have people approach me and ask me about a specific knife design that in my opinion is not going to be the the thing that they think it is. It's not going to be the tool that they really want it to be. And so I f find it important to try to help them understand what it is that they might want to consider when it comes to knife designs. Um, on more than one occasion, for example, I, I've had people approach me uh, wanting to, wanting me to make for them or asking questions about uh, a, a knife that is sort of an all-purpose uh, blade, something that will, you know, you can, I was, I was just talking to a friend of mine, another bladesmith, just yesterday about this, you know, somebody wants to be able to have one knife that can, you know, fillet a, a brook trout and then, you know, go build a log cabin with it after lunch, you know, and that, that kind of knife just doesn't exist, that's just the reality, there is no such knife. And when you try to, if you try to make such a knife, you're going to invariably run into issues that um, you know make it very difficult to build but also the the end user is not going to be satisfied really with anything that the knife does the problem is with those kinds of designs and, and a lot of times you see them as a sort of modified recurve slash kukri-ish sort of design with a saw back and then maybe a guard you know double guard or something like that um, and then a you know uh, heavily contoured handle, all these different things. And what you end up with is is a piece that looks cool but really doesn't do anything well. And, and in my mind, you know, for an end user, that's simply not, that's not satisfactory. And so if they actually end up going out and trying to use this tool, they're not going to be pleased, they're not going to be satisfied. And then I haven't done my job as a, as a bladesmith for for this client in the end anyway. And so that whole thing needs to be kept in mind and now a lot of you guys are, are uh, regular knife users or, or even knife makers and you have you know, an, understand, an understanding of what, you know, what it takes to make a usable, useful knife. And so that's good and if you have friends that maybe don't understand that or customers that don't understand that, I think it's incumbent on the uh, experienced knife user or knife maker to to help educate uh, people so that they don't end up with a less than uh, 
you know, pleasing result the first time they try to get a custom knife or, or something like that. So with that in mind, let's move into what makes a good knife. What makes a good knife for the specific purpose it's designed for. Okay, so sometimes the easiest way to talk about principles is to pull out examples, and so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put in front of you two versions of two classic American woodsman's, or as some people would call it these days, bushcraft blades. You know, this was before bushcraft, pre-bushcraft, -bush if you will. So what we have here is a, a knife that is very similar, actually, very close to the original Kephart design blade. And then this one is a, my version of the Nesmuk, which was popularized by George Washington Sears. And the original Nesmuk knife had a little straighter handle and a little wider blade right about this point. But you get the idea. It's similar, my take on the design. So it's been over 100 years ago now, I guess, that Horace Kephart and George Washington Sears, both who were woodsmen, uh, outdoorsmen and writers and they both landed on these basic or these general designs for their favorite sheath knife or belt knife as it were. Now I should point out that neither of them uh, expected or intended or used their knives, these knives, for everything out in the woods and that just goes back to uh, my, my earlier point that you know these were not the knife that did everything. Um, for example, George Washington Sears, in his kit, he also carried a pocket knife or jack knife, as it were, and a small double bit uh, trail hatchet or, or trail axe. And that was the, the full uh, tool kit, as it were, for, for cutting things. And so this knife was intended for a certain range of tasks, and it, and it did those very well. Now, one thing you might ask is, so two, two contemporaries, uh, both out in the woods, you know, both doing similar things, how do they end up with rather different ideas about what makes the best uh, all-around belt knife? Well, I mean, you're talking about different kind of preferences. That just goes back to the, the vast um, market that is knives, and so everybody's got their own tastes and things like that. But I, I do want to point out that when it comes to function, uh, these knives really aren't all that different. Um, essentially, the, the Kephart is, is a little more plain. Uh, both are very functional, but let's just start from the tip. Let's just start from the point of the knife. So the Kephart here has a spear point on it. And that lends itself very well to, uh, you know, making holes in things if necessary, whether it's a piece of leather, your, you know, your pack maybe if you need to repair uh, in a piece of wood or something to start a, a bow and drill set, you name it. Uh, the spear point really lends itself to that kind of thing. And of course, things like, you know, field dressing, you know, that curved portion of the blade allows you to do different things like that. Likewise on the Nesmuk. Now, as I pointed out earlier, the original Nesmuk design has a little bit fatter blade here and therefore a little less of a pronounced point, as it were. And so that might be one drawback. On my, on my, my design here, on my knife, um, the, po the point is very similar, actually, to the Kephart. And so you really don't lose hardly anything there when it comes to that function, not much anyways. Um, but, and you gain additional strength because just there's more material uh, quickly, immediately behind that point. So they're, they're similar in that regard. Both of them have a curved portion to the front of the blade, more so on the Nesmuk, and so you might imagine that this would perhaps lend itself better to field dressing, uh, skinning, that kind of thing. But both are going to perform those tasks um, you know, satisfactorily. On the Kephart, you have what's known as a broomstick style handle, so it's very plain. This is a this one is a thinner um, design, uh, rather slim. But the great thing about that design is that it does not present, and this was this was part of the point, it does not present any uh, bumps, knobs, contours, what have you, to, uh, to create hot spots on your hand when using it in any position. And that's that's a very valuable design. So here we have a very simple design that is actually makes it more versatile 
than perhaps even this handle design and certainly more versatile than than a knife handle with say finger grooves in it as soon as you put finger grooves or pronounced contours in a handle you're limiting how you can hold and use the knife so that's a very that's a very important thing to remember this knife handle you can hold uh, any direction uh, in any position and it's going to present essentially the same user interface if you will it's going to present the same ergonomics to the user and that's that can be a very valuable thing on the on 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 my Nesmuk here the handle is more contoured but not so much so by any means that you can't you know do do very similar uh, very versatile things with it as with the cap art not as much for example if I try to hold the edge up that presents a little more difficulty uh, it's not immediately ergonomic as as in the case of the cap art so there's limitations but this is a specific design uh, for you know specific purposes and so it's within the intended range of use but those are things to um, those are things to think about and then of course both of these present and provide a drop edge type guard which for a lot of people is desirable and um, and something that most people want you know that allows them to provide that comfort and security as it were when using the knife uh, to not run their finger up on the edge and uh, cause a safety issue some people don't like that but I, I find that most do so you'll notice that even with the different appearance uh, they are very similar in function and obviously one is going to do some things a little better than the other so those are just examples of some good knife designs and what they do and, 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 and how they're used so let's put those aside for a minute and let's move on to some other design elements so what I have here is sort of a modified smaller Kephart design. And you can see just by the blade, it's a basic spear point blade. So I don't know that you necessarily have to call it a Kephart because it's you know, it's a spear point blade, but uh, it's a very versatile uh, blade design once again, and it has uh, it has some more contours to the handle. Okay, so for many people, uh, the the grip or the the ergonomics that it presents for the tasks that you're going to hold in this manner with edge down which is probably most uh, a lot of people really like that and they prefer that to a simple uh, broomstick style handle it is going to limit you in some ways but that's that ultimately at the end of the day that is up to the choice of the user for that particular knife this is a puko style inspired blade it's not a true puko knife but it is inspired by uh, a puko or the uh, northern European or Scandinavian style blades and the primary characteristics that uh, make it so are the fact that it does not have a guard or any kind of drop edge um, natural guard to it which allows you to get very close to the edge and choke up very close to the edge for certain tasks particularly with woodcraft and that kind of thing which is um, one thing that the Puko style or Scandinavian style blades are prized for and of course the blade design uh, mirrors that somewhat and it's, it's there's really nothing special quote unquote about it it's a very serviceable uh, simple functional blade you have you know a straight portion of the edge and then a a natural swoop uh, curve up to the point and that gives you different portions of the blade you know you can use this more for skinning out here this curved portion obviously cutting wood as well and then down here for cutting wood or whatever else you need to cut uh, so it's just a very functional basic blade design and then the straight spine can be used for scraping things like that so even though it's not a spear point blade it still presents a nice uh, point or tip to it that can be used in the same manner uh, the difference primarily is that the tip or point is not in line with the center of the handle and so if you were to use it in this manner it's not going to be like a straight axis down to your your workpiece the axis is over here right at the edge of the spine <clears throat> and that's simply being familiar with your tool and the ergonomics that it presents so there's another um, basic uh, there's another sort of design family if you will when it comes to outdoors types type knives 
Okay, so hopefully you're starting to see some common design elements emerge from those three examples that we talked about here and others that we haven't uh, looked at today. And I, I think those could be boiled down to a few basic principles. Uh, first of all, how is the edge being presented to the work piece or whatever you're working on? So, you know, is the edge straight? Is it curved? Uh, where's the point? That kind of thing. Secondly, how is the blade being, um, what's the blade interface with the user, i.e. the handle? Like how, how are you in contact with that blade? Both of those things are probably the most important things to how a knife is going to work. If one or the other is not adequate or not there, it's going to be very difficult to uh, efficiently and even comfortably use the knife. For example, if you are using a, a straight cleaver type um, blade that has a 90 degree uh, angle or point at the end, it's not going to make the best skinning knife because you're only going to be able to contact whatever you're skinning with maybe the very eighth or quarter inch end of the blade. Likewise, let's say you have a skinning knife with a great swoop to the blade or a curve and allows you to really use that edge as efficiently as possible and perhaps the handle is so uncomfortable that it's very difficult to use, it's too short, it's too small, too blocky, too fat, or maybe just downright uncomfortable with the way it fits in your hand. That's going to minimize your effectiveness and ability to use the knife. So with those things in mind, I just want to show you how I would sit down and design a knife. Now, don't forget that there is definitely an artistic or inspirational um, element to this. And so sometimes you get ideas in your mind, like, oh, I'll try that out, see what that would look like on paper maybe. Or in some cases, today I'll, uh, I'll just go out to the forge and start forging something. But it's because I've done this enough to where I have a pretty good idea of where I'm trying to go and what works and what doesn't. So if you're new to knife making or if you're new to figuring out what kind of knife you want to use, I would recommend you know, sitting down and using a piece of paper to sketch out a design and it's going to help you refine your eye as it were when looking at a knife design. So let's do that next. So these are a couple of sketches that I did the other day and I just want to point out some design features and, and show how they correlate to what we just talked about. So talk about the edge, how that's presented to the, to the work piece. So in this case there is a, a good portion of the blade that has a nice curve to it. That's going to make it versatile for a wide range of tasks when it comes to carving wood, field dressing, cutting rope, whatever you, whatever you need to do with it. It has a good point to it, but not so fine that it, to be weak. And that's uh, assisted by the fairly sharp rise to this clip point compared to some designs. And then it very quickly gets the blade width up to, to a, a good a good width that follows the rest of the way back and one thing that does is give you some more stock to the blade for additional strength uh, without making it thicker and so it still has good uh, good cutting clearance. has our natural drop edge guard here which is a, is a nice feature most of the time and then the handle while slightly curved for some comfortable ergonomics is not excessively um, it's not excessively so and there's no uh, finger grooves or pronounced uh, grooves to limit the versatility of the grip. Now on some knives you want that. On this particular design I think that goes very well. This is a this is a larger version of basically the same thing. And, and aside from the fact that I just think this design looks really cool and, and I don't really know what it's called because it's not it's just my take on an a existing design. It's, it's obviously a clip point um, reminiscent of you know various different design elements but these are things you can sit down and sketch out and give yourself an idea of what it is you're trying to do so let's just do that next so when I'm sketching out a knife um, I do it by eye I do it by feel because for me this is not this is the very artistic side 
of the of the discipline as it were and so rarely do I start with specific dimensions unless I need to for a specific project I don't get the ruler out first and mark off you know blade length and things like that I will sometimes if, if that's called for but generally speaking if I want to just design a knife that I think is gonna be really neat and useful um, I'll just start with a blank sheet of paper and start sketching so what are we gonna design here um Let's say, let's say we should design a, a small Puko style knife. I just, I just feel like drawing that, okay? So a couple things I know um, is approximately, you know, how wide my hand is and what fits well in my hand. And for the most part, that's pretty much across the board a good, a good measurement for most people. You know, I don't think I've ever had anybody ask me to make a handle smaller. Um, occasionally I've had a couple people ask for bigger handles because Sometimes you run into that, but for the most part, it's a pretty, pretty basic uh, measurement. So, so you know, you're never starting to just draw a single line when you're doing this. This is sketching, and I am by no means an artist. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to drawing whatsoever. I just know how I like to draw draw a knife. And so, what I like to do is just kind of start um, sketching some lines and seeing, you know, where I can get kind of where I can get that knife to emerge from. So um, it gives me, gives me a chance to start honing in on what I have in my mind for a picture of a knife and, uh, you know, make it come out on paper a little bit. And uh, unfortunately this <laughs> brown paper underneath my um, typing paper here is all lumpy and and stuff like that so it's making this a little more difficult but so here here's just a little basic very simple almost puko style design here and I'm not sure what I want to do with the handle do I want to put a little more of a palm swell to it um, kind of gives you a little more comfortable grip locks it in a little bit more I don't know we could do that um, something like that and this could just be it could be either a full tang or it could be a, a hidden tang knife that you could uh, Build it either way, really. And if you want to add some kind of a guard, um, and that's just a really quick and simple, simple sort of example right there. Okay, so what about something else? Let's say we want to do, say we want to do, um, oh gosh, I don't know. Let's do a miniature buoy, like a, a, a miniature buoy style. So we're gonna do with a, we're gonna do a clip point. You know, a, a, let's say an aggressive, aggressive clip point. This is this is really going to be a, a tiny, <laughs> um, a tiny aggressive clip point buoy. Never seen such a thing. That's crazy. But, whoops, got away from me there. Um, they, some of the original buoys had these super aggressive uh, clip points to them, and I guess they were originally called clip points because they resembled the prow of a clipper ship. You know the. The tall ships of the day as it were okay so you know this is your new EDC knife it's a it's gonna be your go-to blade it's gonna be this size I mean we're talking miniature and this is your Bowie knife so what do I want to do here uh, traditional maybe we need a little bit bigger guard I don't know we could just go with um, I don't know we could go with a coffin handle let's just go with a coffin style handle because that seems to be easier right now um, Thing about Bowie knives is the genre was so diverse that you really can't look at any one knife and say that's a Bowie. It was really, <laughs> it was actually even more of a, a marketing thing back in the day than it was a design thing. Um, there were knives that people were calling Bowie knives that we would never consider a Bowie knife today, uh, simply because the name Bowie was something that sold knives. In fact, uh, Davy Crockett was one such subject. There was Crockett knives. <clears throat> For some reason that never caught on and we don't have Crockett knives today, but they did back then. So, so there's your little, your little tiny EDC clip point buoy right there. And the reason that the, uh, <laughs> the proportions are so bad is because that's still not even a handle, but you know, you can't make your, uh, your full size handle on a blade that size. So we'd have to make this blade much, much bigger and the handle about out to here to even approach 
the proper proportions of a real Bowie knife. But you get the picture. So there we have it. We have a little miniature clip point. So there you have it. Um, there's some. There's just some ideas for you. This is how I like to sit down and kind of sketch out what's on my mind. Let's, let's do a real knife. Let's do another real knife here. That's just for fun, I guess. Um, all right. So if I'm going to design, well, let's just go with kind of a Kephart style because one of the plagues, one of the curses of, of being a knife maker is that you're never, you've never found the perfect knife. The only saving grace is that I can keep making them until someday maybe I do find the perfect knife. For me, that is. If you guys have found the perfect knife, that's awesome. So, let me think about this. So, I've got, you know, I've got... Okay, well, let's just go with something like a, a very basic uh, broomstick style. Here, okay, here we go. This is, this is sort of a cross between um, mm, a frontier style knife. I've actually made a couple of these before now that I think about it. Um, but it's, it's sort of a cross between a Kephart and, um, and this is getting bad here. This is very simple. This is a very simple design. Um, you don't see me doing, this could almost be a kitchen knife actually, but you'd be amazed at how versatile this design right here is in the woods. Um, you know, you're not going to see me designing anything <laughs> like... You're not going to see anything like this coming out of my shop. Like, let me see. Can I, can I design a really weird knife for a minute here? Um, gosh, I don't know. What are we doing here? <laughs> okay, I can't. I can't even do it. I can't even. I can't even design a. I can design a recurve. It's okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Yeah, I don't know. If you look at those movie knives, those video game knives, you know, they've got this really, really funky curves, you know, to them, and they've just got all these things coming off of them, you know, and it's just, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. You know, what I'm after when it comes to designing knives, whether it's an outdoors blade, whether it's a kitchen knife, go back to those two principles. How is the edge, how is the blade presented to what you're cutting? And how does how does the handle how does the interface present itself to the user? Those are your two two principles that you need to think about when you're designing knives. And here again, we have a very versatile grip that's going to work for most everybody very well. And then we have a a versatile edge for a wide range of tasks. We've got the tip here that's that's uh, versatile. Um, it's just it's just really kind of simple. I, you know, I don't want to oversimplify it, but sometimes we have to go back to that whole principle, keep it super simple. Some people say it a different way, but um, there you have it. Here's a, here's a little Bowie knife that I'm working on, and it's designed as a fighting knife. So what sets it apart as a fighting knife is number one, the balance, the blade design. We have a distal taper here. We have a point that's, uh, that works for penetration. And then, of course, the balance here. This is not a chopping knife, even though it's a size you might think that. The weight is not distributed where you would want it for a chopping knife. The weight puts the balance right where you would want it for a fighting knife um, so that you can move quickly and wield it. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, that's just an example of designing a knife for the purpose that it's intended for. Now, is somebody going to go out and fight with this? I doubt it, but that's what it's designed as. I mean, and there's value to that. So whatever it is you're designing your knife for, just keep those two things in mind. How does the edge present itself to the work? And how does the user connect? What's the interface? How does the user connect with the blade? And if you keep those two things in mind and ask the right questions, um, you really can't go wrong. Um, ask the right questions and make those things work for you and have fun. All right guys, well thanks for listening to me ramble about knives. Uh, that kind of gives you an idea of my philosophy of knife making where I'm kind of coming from on it. And hopefully it was helpful to you if you're working on a knife design or anything like that. And I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you on the next video.